well, got my loud and proud cup of coffee here. Coffee cup, my bad. Headed over to my parents' soon to be previous home to load up Nasty Red. And you guys liked the videos with Nasty Red, so I thought, hey, let's do another one like that. Let's do another video like the one with my dad, the one I did with Nasty Red doing the 060 poles. And let's just kind of see if you guys liked us. This is what I used to do. I just kind of was like, okay, what can I film that's going on today? Was it like, let's see if I can only find a project to talk about, with, you know, film or whatever, like time lapse. It was, I did some of that stuff. I did. But I also did a lot of like, okay, dad's going to be hauling the gooseneck with, with a load today. Let's get that on video. Uh, dad's going to be doing this. Let's go see if we can film that. Or my grandpa's in town. Let's go film a video and get his reaction to this vehicle or, you know, whatever. So it was always like activity things more than just like a time lapse project or talking about a topic. It was just the mix of things. So we're going to get on the road here. I got to stop by the bank, but then we're going to be heading over and hopefully seeing Nasty Red get loaded down. My dad's going to be meeting me at a dealership right next door in a minute here. He's going to be selling his Challenger as the goal. So we're going to meet him over here and he's going to be saying goodbye to that. He was going to sell it a couple days ago, but the dealership that he took it to, they said that they you know, said, oh yeah, bring it in. We'll give you a quote and see if we can buy it off you. Well, what they didn't tell him was, well, we can't actually buy it off you today. Like it'll be like next week when our sales manager is back in then we'll see what he can give you on price and then we'll see if he can actually buy that car or if that's not something we are in the market to buy for our lot right now but that's like you told me you could buy it and like you know so it was just kind of it was just kind of weird but anyways this dealership this is the one we sold our cadillac to we walked in and said hey we want to sell our cadillac and they're like hey we want to give you money so then they gave us what we wanted out of it and i was like well, that was cool that was quick uh, but this dealership's also a much bigger one. They can do a lot of volume. They've got like four lots in this city with all different brands. They do Porsches and Lambos and Fords and they do, they have a Dodge lot with Jeeps and Chryslers and all that stuff, you know, whatever, everything Chrysler related. We're gonna head over here and I guess we may be saying goodbye to Dad's 392. But that's not it for the video. That's just a small piece of it. We are almost here. I believe, I believe my dad has already gotten the deal done. That was quick. Like I said, I, he just got off the phone with me like 15 minutes ago and said he's going to be stopping by there soon. And he was just leaving the house. And he already texted me and said, I think we're good to go. Let's see if we can get one last look at the old 392. There it is. She's off. And to everybody asking the questions about why we're getting rid of vehicles, uh, dude. I mean, you're talking about a once in a lifetime opportunity, which might not be for a good reason. It might actually end up being something really bad. But in the meantime, I'd rather be on the good side of getting out of a vehicle when I can make money on it and drive it, put tons of miles on it, make a lot of trips with my families. We got to enjoy the car. And then not only that, it didn't come around to bite us in the butt because we made a bunch of money on it. Just like with his car, he's like, I love this car. I don't need to sell this car. But he's like, if I have the option to make like 10 grand on this thing, he's like, dude, this car is gone. I got to drive it, enjoy it, have fun with it. But at the end of the day, I've got a really nice King Ranch pickup truck with 100,000 miles on it sitting in my barn paid off. And he's got a flatbed compound turbo 12 valve, you know? So he's like, I just don't, I don't need a sports car, you know? Like I had fun with it, but hey. I got to enjoy it, make some money, and now it's going. The Nasty here, we're gonna be loading it up. I did just pick my dad up from selling his car, so that is gone. But we're gonna be loading this up with the Kubota. We're gonna be hauling it over to his other farm, and um, we're gonna be getting this loaded up right now, and then I'm gonna be hauling over his small lawn care trailer, his um, utility trailer with the zero turn, and helping him get that hauled over at the same time. So let's get the tractor fired up here, and loaded up on the gooseneck. My dad has had this Kubota, for those of you wondering, since it was brand new in 2012. And uh, it's been pretty freaking problem free. 1,000, 1,046 hours. And hasn't really had any issues. It stalled out a couple times due to needing a new fuel filter that was getting pretty, pretty dirty. But other than that, just oil changes and diesel. It probably would have helped getting the video of loading that up if I would have hit record. I was loading this up. I thought you guys would think that's the coolest thing. Actually, you know, like getting video, but whatever. They said they missed the nasty after 
the last video, they were like, man, Na they're like, man, we missed, we missed the nasty. Nobody misses the seeing the giant cracks in the dash, but yeah, the number one comment I get with Nasty Red is, why does the driver door paint look different? Because it is. Because we thought it would create more comments, and that's important for the social. Yeah, it's algorithm. Yeah. That's what it's all about, you know. Or how the fender is a little bit crinkled, but we're not going to talk about that. Wait, you saw that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. The hammer did its job. The hammer did its job. Yeah, so. Uh, the old flatbed, we got the gooseneck hooked up, the wiring, it's actually slick how they have the, uh, the spots for the chains to hook up, the wiring, everything right under that little cover. I really like that. It's pretty nice. Got the airbags on it. People, somebody asked me the other, the other day, they said, I've been looking for a good quality plow mount for a second gen. What is the brand of the plow mount you run on yours? This is a Western. It is, see, I told him, I said, I think it's a Western, but I could be wrong. Because I didn't know if your plow was Western or not. Or... It's pretty slick. And um, I haven't taken off the sleeves yet. But like you can see how it's got these big things here. But all you have to do is you pull this out and then those come off. So it doesn't look quite so. Hey, that, it doesn't look so noticeable. Right. Yeah. But... Yeah, that's cool. But since it's just a work truck, we just leave them. So you don't lose them in the barn somewhere. And if you see how slick it is going back in. Yeah. It's really, easy to work. it's really smooth. You can see the pin that's welded in there. Yeah. It's got to go lower and like it hooks on the. Yeah, there, there it is. Yeah, see, it really is actually easy. It really is easy. <laughs> you just got to see where the pin's at. But, um, but yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna get this all chained down and then maybe get some, maybe get some shots of it hauling over to the farm. What's that? You said you know it's your drink truck. Oh, it is. It is. I love 12 hours. I have a thing for them. We're carrying an entire tree right now. Don't even feel it. It's not even that heavy, really. Don't worry about Master Ed. He can take it. We got the tractor, the bush hog. Tractor has the front loader on. Two truck toolboxes and two huge 10 foot long solid hardwood beams that my dad hewed out years ago. I think they're both hickory. I mean, they're freaking, they were actually pretty heavy. The nasty. I said, 
Nasty might be rough around the edges, but it is a freaking farm truck. And it is a bad farm truck, man. Like, that's what it was built for. It was built, the trans, the power, the compounds, I mean, everything was built to hook up to a freaking huge load and just not even phase it. I mean, that's, that's literally the whole point of that entire build. From start to finish, that's the only thing that we had in mind was working the snot out of it and the truck not even being phased. I don't know what says farm truck more than that right there. So how did Nasty Red do? How the gauges do? Or did you not pay attention to them? Yeah. Just you're just not used to having them the last three years. But when I drove it the other day, the trans temp and boost gauge and I mean everything read very very good. I thought I was gonna have to file a police report because I had missing fuel on Nasty Red. Oh. I watched your video yesterday. Uh, we didn't we didn't burn that we didn't burn that much fuel. <laughs> I think the whole black smoke being wasted fuel thing is a joke. No, no, that was sketchy, man. I didn't like that at all. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little scared for a second. That thing was like going woof, woof, like back and forth. It's been a while since we filmed videos like this. Heck yeah. Heavy lifting in the nasty red. How do you like driving the nasty though? It's fun. It's fun? Yeah. It's good, now that I, uh got rid of the challenger this is going to be, be my most fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah no kidding this is going to this is going to re replace the 4.4 .4, 0 to 60 to a nine second <laughs> so smoky at a pull though. I saw you going down the road when you hit overdrive. It was like barreling smoke for a little while there. I was like, that thing is so freaking awesome. <laughs> How much boost pressure is it making right now? How many pounds? 20. 20 pounds right now and you're going 40 at 2200 RPM? We're about to hit overdrive though. We're gonna launch. Yeah. say this thing rides very nice with a several thousand pound tractor on the back and a 30 foot gooseneck I mean it's nice like an Escalade what's your trans temp at right now 170 ish yeah. 170 degrees the exhaust temperatures at 700 see the stopping power though is what like I have to stop I have to just to be safe I have to start way in advance yeah yeah so you can feel like if I if I wait too long you could end up in the intersection <laughs> that one time. i remember that your brakes like one out yeah that was freaking terrifying and then you took it to the shop to like yeah your brakes your brakes went out your master cylinder went bad or whatever it was and you're like what and you were hauling the king ranch behind this thing yeah i remember we were filming that day that was that was pretty scary i think that's when my turbo started going out yeah you hauled it up there Well, I do think Jim at Maximum Overdrive built the transmission just right for towing though. I mean, it does pull really that's nice. Really and that's what I was telling everybody when when we were doing the zero to 60 pulls in this thing, I was like, you guys also have to keep in mind when we had this transmission built, 
he said, well, what are you doing with the truck? Are you sled pulling, towing, you know, like a towing farm truck? I mean, it's got a flatbed on it. I mean, like, what are you doing with it, you know? He's like, or is it like a high performance, screaming high RPM, 4,000 RPM shift point? Like, what do you want? I said, it's, a, it's a, gonna be a work truck, hooking up to a gooseneck, because at the time, you were doing a lot of hay hauling around and stuff. I'm like, it's gonna be hooking up to a gooseneck, pulling 15, 20, 25,000 pounds of hay bales. That's what it's gonna do. He's like, okay then, I'll build it for a towing transmission. And it does it really well, I mean, it really does. I mean, it's not the fastest thing in the world with it, but, you know. Trailer trucks. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling them the other day, I drove past uh, like a 50 acre field just loaded with GM trucks. I was like, well, there's all those trucks you guys ordered several months ago that you haven't got. I don't think this tractor's been on this trailer since we uh, brought it back from Ohio. Yeah, I think the last time, well, Worcester probably to your house at the time. I remember that with the King Ranch going up and down those hills, though, when you picked it up from the guy that overhauled it. And then we just hauled it to our neighbor who actually overhauled it like quick he's like i don't know what you paid for but he's like it needed all redone <laughs> you just can't replace those old guys that know the ins and outs of those things like like they grew up around them like they just know them you know i'm telling you this thing with the airbags and everything this thing is stout man just stout so he's actually going to hook it up to a cedar and then just pull it right back on the trailer You can go back a hair, just a hair back. Yeah, I would. Perfect. Would you say you thought it weighed? Your guess? Close to seven thousand. You think close that to seven? Yeah. I guess close I to don't six. Know if the tires are filled or not, though. I don't think they are. Uh, but I don't remember. I thought. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I'll look up the factory spec and see. Uh, see what the John Deere brochure from the '70s said. So we're gonna be getting in the King Ranch here. I've got to hook up to my lawn care trailer I let my dad borrow, and uh, we're gonna haul it back over to his farm. Then I'm gonna unhook it from this truck, hook it up to Rosine, then hook it up and go to my house and hook it up to go do some you know, property maintenance I gotta do at my property. All day long in the sun, I'm telling you. You know, if I filmed like everything that I did outside every day, you guys might get a little bit bored. I mean, I complain about the heat a lot, but it's because I'm out in it a lot. I love how smoky it gets out of pull. <laughs> I was so far off on how much I thought that thing weighed. I did some searching on Google, the most trustworthy search source in the world. I hope you guys picked up on the sarcasm there. But anyways, that tractor does not weigh anything near six or 7,000 pounds. In fact, according to a old John Deere brochure, that tractor, depending on what you spec'd out, the diesel option weighed between 9,050 pounds and like 10,750 pounds depending on options on that tractor to, you know that could change the weight that's a heavy load then because that cedar's got to be every bit man I want to say that cedar's every bit of 1200 pounds to 1500 pounds maybe I want to say cl probably closer to 1200 ish I mean it's a pretty heavy cedar but man my dad just called me and he's like you might want to edit out that part where we sound like a couple of idiots saying this thing weighs like six or seven thousand pounds he's like dude we're way off man he's like this thing weighs nine thousand plus he's like i just googled it i said i just googled it too i'm like well i don't know i mean it's not like we had a scale and i've never weighed it before i've never looked it up before we have no idea just totally just guess and i just like i was just thinking well the kubota weighs about 36 3800 pounds Nasty red, the truck itself probably weighs like 7,000 to 8,000 pounds. I don't know for sure. You know, I'm like, the tractor probably weighs like six to seven. Like, it's probably in that ballpark. You know, it's way bigger than the Kubota by a few thousand pounds for sure. 
but I don't know if it weighs more than, you know, the pickup truck, you know, with a diesel in it, you know, but I guess it does. I mean, it thinks it's pretty heavy. Well, how'd you do today? Good or bad? The first time I've ever backed it up and not had to recorrect a couple times. Just one time? <laughs> yeah. I think that's the first one and done. Yeah. It might, I don't know, maybe. Maybe the lighting's perfect. There's, sometimes there's a blind spot in there. Yeah. Like because of the change of outside and inside. Didn't get hot? The gauges look fine? The gauges are fine. Good. Good. Yeah. It is yeah. hot out today, though. People hooked up because um, that hay over there is overdue to be cut and bailed. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that it's supposed to be here some rain tomorrow and hopefully we'll be able to get over there and hold that down. So I may be able to use that instead of the hay wagon to pick up some of the bales on this side of the creek. Any final words to people about entering giveaways? Well, I haven't met everybody from the giveaways. But you've met a good handful, but I've probably met a good ten. Handful. Special moment when somebody picks up their uh, truck, especially after buying what a be anything from a beanie to a keychain to a hoodie or whatever. Like the guy that won the first gen, he's like, "Yeah, hey, I spent twelve ninety nine on this little this yeah. little keychain." He's like, "And I got a first gen with fifty five thousand miles and five thousand dollars." You really have nothing to lose because you're getting a product that you're going to probably use anyway. And then in addition to that, you have the chance to win, in most cases, cash as well as a vehicle. The guy's like, dude, he's like, I figured 12 bucks ain't going to change my life. I might right. as well, <laughs> I'll spend it on dumber things. I'd rather enter to win a vehicle. On one burnout and diesel, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you end up winning the truck and you don't like it, cash out, man. The market's hot. Yeah, no kidding. No freaking kidding. I don't think I have any problems getting rid of it. <laughs> if, if for some reason, if for some reason there's some screws loose and you don't like diesel trucks, but you know, yeah. that can happen. Maybe, maybe the white one will be too much power for some it's of these awesome. sissies, you know, it can happen. It's a real thing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.